Ho, ho, ho! Merry Rigmas! Well, welcome back to Merry Rigmas. Today I'm going to show you how to make up a conga rig. This is specifically done for boats, uh, kayaks, and when you're actually on the water. Um, I haven't tried it from the shore, it may work, but casting might be a bit tricky. I've seen this rig somewhere, I can't remember where I got it from, so if it looks like someone else's rig, my apologies. I'm sure it's maybe a generic rig, but um, I'm going to show you what I use for big congas, which caught me my 35 pound conga a few videos ago. I will tag that in the description below if you want to see me catch a big conga, which is six foot tall. Right, let's go downstairs, look at the components, and I'm going to show you how to tie a very simple conga reel rig, which will get you some very big congas. Okay, so we're going to be making a uh, conga reel rig today, specifically uh, for when you're fishing on the boats or, or kayaks. As I said in my intro, it's probably not my, I can't, it's not necessarily my rig. I've added a few bits to it, which I think improves the rig um, slightly and just some different changes, but um, I'm sure it's been done. But here's my version of it anyway. Uh, what you're going to need um, is a lighter line if you're fishing in really snaggy, rocky areas, Rex as well, because uh, that's going to be, uh, be used as a breakaway line for your weight. So you're still going to have the fish attached if it gets snagged up, but you're just going to lose your weight. So I use 30 pounds for that, and you can use 15 pounds. So grab some of that if you want to make uh, a weak link. What you're also going to need a, a, a plain weight. And what I uh, think is going to be great, I've got this sort of, um, it's a bait holder. Uh, with a weight at the bottom, but the problem is this weight's not going to be strong enough to hold the bottom at sea. So I've attached uh, a slightly bigger weight to it, just with a clip, uh, with a clip there as you can see, and that's going to be used uh, as my weight. And I'm going to put in lots of ground bait and lots of muck in that to attract conger eels, because they love scent. So that's what you're going to need. You can just use a weight, no problem whatsoever, but if you can get hold of one of those and put loads of, or a method feeder, you can use a, a coarse fishing one as well, just attach it to the weight and put a load of fish guts in it and oils, bran, that sort of thing, it's going to attract the fish. So grab yourself one of those. Again, that's optional. The next bit is also optional, Muppets. Now, these are luminous green ones are fantastic, they glow in the dark, so you're fishing in very deep water, in very dark, murky water, and a luminous Muppet may help for attraction. I've got a small one there, I've got big ones, uh, lots of different colours. I like the green ones because they're a bit clearer, they're a bit luminous, and I really do think they work. So today, I'm just going to be adding a smaller Muppet like that, uh, and I'll make a couple of these rigs up for myself, but I'll try some big ones as well. So grab yourself if you want, don't have to use these, but some Muppets, fantastic accessory. We're going to need some large hooks. These are Cox and Rule meat hooks, and these are 8 uh, 6 0 sorry. Uh, obviously, you can go bigger, you can go smaller, depending on what fish you're targeting, but I'm fishing for big conger eels tomorrow, uh, hence why I'm using those hooks. You're going to need two barrel swivels like that. These are 300 pounds strength. So grab two very strong ones. You don't want light ones here because it's heavy gear and heavy work we're going to be doing. And then you want uh, another clip, uh, a little link clip like that. That's a light one because that's what we're attaching the weight to. So we don't need a big one for that. Uh, a light one will be fine. You're going to need two little beads. These are just green little luminous beads. Don't need to be luminous. can be any beads. Clear will be fine. A strong uh, mono. This is £100. I would probably go up £200 if I had it, so £100 I think will pretty much be fine for all your fish, but I would go stronger if you can. And that's all you're going to need. So um, let's lay all these components out and uh, let's start building the rig. Right, so here's our accessories. I've laid them out pretty much in the order that we're going to have them at. So we're going to have our link clip here. That's going to attach the weight to it. We're going to have, sorry about that, £100 of main line running up to the main swivel which we're going to connect to our uh, main line. We're going to have two beads in the middle of that and then we're going to have another swivel in between those two beads which we're going to attach the hook link to. So it's going to go down go down like that. Okay. So we're going to grab 100 pound of our line. Now bear in mind with very thick mono it can be difficult to tie knots so you might prefer to use uh, crimps. So as I said the first bit we're doing is the hook length. So we've got our two foot of 100 pound mono, let's say you can use up to sort of two, 300 pound mono if you like, this is just what I'm using. Uh, the, the, the more you go up in, in, in mono size and strength, the harder it is to tie. 
but I find £100 is just about okay. So the knot I'm going to use is a grinner knot, it's my favourite knot. Put the line through the hook, so your line is facing the point, like so. I'm going to show you how to tie a grinner, it's not going to be the easiest one, I'll say there's going to be better videos showing you how. Bring the line which is shorter, bring it up, so it's in line like so, and then bring a loop back around that line like that. Let's say go online for these videos, but I mean you're going to want to bring that tag end through that loop and around both lines uh, around about four times for a hundred pound mono. You can do five, but the more you do, the trickier it gets. So I'm just going to do four, and then pull it up and just moisten the knot. And as you pull up, grab that taller end there, and you'll see the knot, it will just slide down. Now, you want to keep make sure that's tight. More moisten it a bit more. And it's just going to pull tight like, like so. There you go. So, that, that's not going to go anywhere. I can promise you that's not going to go anywhere. What I like to do is I just grab the, the scissor handles, put the hook through like that, and just pull on it tight, just give it sort of 30 pound of pressure, something like that. Just really pull it tight to make sure that knot's nice and it's not slipping. And once you know it's not going to slip, just trim the tag end off. Again, leave, leave about two centimetres of tag end because that just ensures, but if that knot does slip ever so slightly, it's got a little bit of give until it, until it sort of pulls in tight, all right? Shouldn't need it, but that's ideal. And as I said, I'm going to be using uh, a Muppet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the Muppet on. Now that needs to go um, base, basically uh, backwards, really. So we want to put get get, it out, get all those little tentacles out of the way and put your line so it's going down through the head. I'll probably find out now that it's not been moulded properly. There we go, so we've got it through. And then just slide your Muppet all the way down. Oh, it's caught some line there. To your hook. Now what that does is not only protects your knot and your hook, it just adds a little bit of attraction. Now you can add a bit of UV light to charge that up, but you shouldn't need to. Um, what I like to do is just use a big flapper bait right through the mouth. Um, the job's a good one. So now we're going to make the extra rig body for this. Um, all we want to do now is obviously tie a swivel on the other end. So get your 300 pound swivel, pop it through, I'll put you, pull you back down here, and then just do another grinner. Now you want that hook uh, trace length to be now about uh, a foot and a little bit. It doesn't have to be very long. So we're going to make that loop again in the line, and we're just going to go through four times. One, two, three, four. And then we're just going to pull semi-tight, moisten the knot, slide it down, tighten a little bit up there, and then just pull tight like so. Oh, there we go. Lovely. And then we're going to snap, snap that tag end off. Don't need that. Again, leaving just a little bit, uh, just to in case it does slip. I've never experienced one slip, but if it does... Now what you could do is you could add some shrink tube into that if you wanted to be really particular and you liked your rigs looking really neat. You could put some shrink tube over it, put it over the kettle, and that will just seal it nice and tight. Um, and you could also do the same to that end as well, but today we're not going to worry. Now, pop the tip length to one side, grab your 100-pound mono again, and trim off around about three foot, something like that. Now, the reason why you need about three foot, it's going to be about two and a half foot long in total, is because when you do the knots, you're going to lose a little bit. So you've got about three foot. To one end, nearly lost my bead there, attach a little link clip like so. That's where your weight's going to go on. So again, you're using the grinner knot. So we're going to make that loop and go through four times. One, two, three, four. Now, if any of these knots don't sit nicely, redo them, because if, if any of them slip and they, and they come off, your hook link is just going to slide off the end of this and you're going to lose your fish. So, 
make sure they're nice and tight. So that's on, that's on nicely. What you can do, I'm going to attach the weight to this now so I can pull on it a little bit. So my weight's attached on there, I'm just going to give it a little bit of force to make sure it all goes in, into place. There you go, like it has. Cut the tag end off. Again, leave in about two centimetres of tag end, just accounting for that slip. Then what you want to do now is you've got one end with um, a, a link clip and your weight and you've got an end with nothing on it. Slide on one bead. In fact, I might have to go and get some, oh no, no, these beads will just about go on. Slide on your bead, then you need to grab your hook trace swivel and slide that through, that's the next part. Making sure your bead is big enough to make sure that, I'll explain to you there, make sure that your swivel don't go over the bead because that'll be pointless. So you just want to keep that bead there. So you've got a bead going down to your weight, drop that. Whee! You've got your hook, hook length going on like that. And then at the top, Again, grab another bead. This just protects the knots as it slides up and down the line. Bead goes on. And then attach your swivel. Your big rolling 300 pound swivel. And again, you should use a grinner knot. Four turns is fine. One, two, three, four. I find when you're using big mono, with a grinner knot, it's better to make a bigger loop. Uh, it just gives you a little bit, makes it a little bit easier for you. And just keep moistening the, that knot as it goes down. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. That's gone on beautifully. There you go. And then just trim that tag end off. And that is your rig. Really simple conger eel rig, which is fantastic for using over reef and wrecks. So you've got, let's just do an overview. Very, very simple. An overview of this rig. You've got a 300 pound swivel connected to your main line and your rod. You've got a bead leading up. You've got your hook trace there with your muppet and hook. And that just slides up and down like so. You've got another bead and then that goes down to your weight. And as I said, I've just attached um, a method feeder weight there, which I'm going to ram a load of bait in and smelly liquids to help that uh, fish well. And then I've added a heavier weight so it keeps to the bottom. Now, I was talking about that weak link earlier. If you're fishing in directly in a wreck um, or really reefy, rocky ground, grab some 30 pound line, just like so. Tie it on to the link clip there and make, just make a little loop. You can make two loops, a loop one end, a loop at the other end, and about two inches like that. And then attach that to your weight. So if your weight gets caught, you can pull tight. That will snap your 30 pound or 20 pound uh, weak link. And then you've still got your trace and you've still got your hook to, and you've still got your fish to catch, which is ideal really. So there you go. That is rig two and day two of uh, Merry Rigmus. Uh, give it a go, go and try and catch some conger eels, they're great fun, they put a great bend in the rod and um, if you've got any comments or any questions, give me a shout.